our next guest is Labour MP Stella Creasy. Now, she went through a real harrowing ordeal last year when she was harassed by an online troll. She faced not only incessant emailing, but also a distressing intrusion into her family life that's still impacting them to this day. Stella joins us now to explain more. Hi, Stella. Uh, yeah. Thanks so much for, for being here today. When you, when you read this on paper, it seems absolutely unbelievable that it can happen. Mm. So fill us in on how it sure. started. And I'm sorry not to join in the Christmas cheer that you've got this morning. Oh, we can have that afterwards, Stella. <laughs> Don't worry. Um, I receive lots and lots of emails from people about the work that I do, as do every MP. And last year, a man started emailing me. They were angry, incoherent emails. He wasn't a constituent, so I didn't respond. Because you're Walthamstow, he's I'm from Leicester. Yeah, he's Leicestershire he, God's own country of Walthamstow. He wasn't a local resident, so I didn't respond to him. I let him rant. That was his right, his democratic right to express those opinions. And then I got a call from social services. And they said they'd received an allegation that I was an unfit mother to my children that they'd had to investigate. Now, they'd cleared me. And bear in mind, this is people I work with in my local community every day. So that was really embarrassing mm. and mortifying. They'd had cool. to sit around and have that discussion. Uh, but they were calling because they were a bit worried that this person had fixated on me and my family to make such an allegation. How it many, turned out to be the same guy. How many emails had he, had he been oh, sending you? Too, and, and too many to count. Had any of them mentioned anything like that to do with social services? No, they were all to do with his objection to my political views and the work that I was doing about tackling violence against women. So they were nothing to do with my children. He'd never met me and my children, never seen me and my children, but he had decided to write to social services purely because his view was that my views would be a risk to my children. My children should be taken away from me and my family as a result. And that had triggered an investigation. So that investigation mm. began, and yeah. listen, rightly so, I think social services do a great job, you know, that's Absolutely, exactly what yeah. they're there for. A complaint's come in, they've got to look into it. Yeah. So they've looked into it, they've popped round, they've come to see you or spoken to you. Explain what happened when they realised, oh, hang on a minute, we think well, this might so they, not be they what they held we a think. panel to look at it, as I say, with people that I work with in my local community as the MP, because it was my local social services, they had quickly decided there was nothing in it, but they were concerned about this gentleman's obsession with me and what he'd said. So we raised it with the police and the police then started to investigate. And obviously we then put two and two together with all the emails and correspondence. Now, it's a really surreal thing when you're an MP to find a P, um, somebody attacking you under a piece of legislation that yeah. you help write. I help yeah. write legislation about stalking and harassment. Yeah. So I knew it was quite dangerous for somebody to be that fixated, that obsessed yeah. with me and what I was doing. You had all the knowledge. That yeah, my kids were my kids were then his next target. Um, so the police identified this person by their emails. They then ran around to see him. They decided that all this was was that he was really bad at expressing himself, and he did have a right to his opinion because I was an MP. And my feeling is that absolutely, I I very rarely block people. Right, we engage in all sorts of political discussions, of but surely we can all put our kids beyond the line. Absolutely. Yeah. So for him to do something that then affects my children. Yeah is surely out of order. Um, but the police decided that it was, he was within his rights to be concerned that my politics might hurt my children, so they weren't gonna take it any further. But they had told him that I found his behavior distressing and therefore he should, should cut it out. Um, when I went public with the fact that he did he that, cut it out? Well, no, that's the problem. So uh, when I went public and said, look, I, I don't think this is right, because we're basically green lighting, that if you disagree with somebody, and yeah. it's not just politicians, I know of other women in the public eye mm. this has happened to, you can have a pop at their kids. Uh, another organisation came forward and said, actually, he's continued to write malicious complaints about you and he's continued to target you. And at that point, I was really, really worried because, as I say, yeah. one of the things about stalking and harassment is people getting to the point where they're so obsessed with you, they really want to harm you. And so, at that point, the, uh, the police... Initially, the police response wasn't brilliant, but actually the police then took it further and he went to court last week and he was convicted of harassment. One thing that really stuck with me mm. um, was not only, obviously we'll, we'll say what the police had to say, let's just yeah. the police had to say on, on their behalf in a second, but they obviously say, you know, he's entitled to this. But unfortunately for you, the damage was already done because I didn't understand this until this morning when I was, I was reading up about this. But because you'd been reported to social services, even though they knew there was nothing wrong, it leaves a record. Yeah. So, for example, one of, one of the ladies that work here, Ellie, she, was, she used to work in A&E, 
And the question is asked when you go to A&E with your child, yeah. which you did yeah. because your child needed some attention, have you ever been involved with social services? And it's a red flag. A flag yeah. comes up to say, yeah. oh, you might need to watch this. You've now got that stigma surrounding you. And this is the challenge for me, is that although he's been told by the courts to stop, he got a suspended sentence, he's, we've got a restraining order, the harassment still continues as long as the record continues. Of course it does. And this happens to people across the country where people make patently malicious reports as a way of harassing somebody. So, and yeah, I ended up in hospital having yeah. to say, well, uh, no, but yes, well, you don't want to have that conversation when your you kid's don't. really ill. You just want to get your kid treated. And can I just and say... And does that report stay forever? That report stays because they have they have to hold these reports. Now, my local authorities say they've locked the report. Actually, to be honest, that's worse because then people think, oh, well, there's a report about the local MP. We don't know what it says. Yeah. No smoke without fire. Well, this yeah. is what I wanted to ask you because, mm. look, I completely get it and I think it's completely right that there should be a record of any type of, yeah. you know, social services call because you don't know what that could then lead yeah. into in the future. I agree yeah. with that. However, in a circumstance like this where it's clearly no wrongdoing has been done, <laughs> should that report then still stay for you to have moments like that? Well, this is why now I'm proposing legislation for a process that where is something patently malicious, patently vexatious, there should be a process for deleting it. Because I just want my kids to go back to being kids. I don't yeah. want this hanging over them. I don't want when I apply for my daughter to go to school to have to declare it as well. Because as you say, yeah. it does change the conversation. So absolutely, I do a lot of safeguarding work as an MP. Safeguarding is really important. But in circumstances where a report has deliberately and intentionally made to harm, we should have a way of deleting it to stop the harm. Agree. This man was completely clear. It was purely because of my political views, mm. nothing to do with my children. Yeah. You know, my children are toddlers. They have mm. strong views on vegetables, not wearing coats <laughs> and Paw Patrol. They don't have political <laughs> yeah. views. It's nothing to do with them, but they are at harm because of what he's done. So we need a way when there's something like this so clear cut that we can delete them and end that process. I think this is common sense, isn't yeah. it? When and the wheels, are, you've got the wheels in motion to try and help that happen. Yeah, and there's cross party support. It's got to go to the House of Lords now. And I hope that the government will pick it up. I also think I think, frankly, we probably need to recognise that people targeting MPs and targeting people in the public eye and their staff and their families, like, that, that isn't free speech. That's no. designed to silence and intimidate people, and we need to stop that, because I want to hear more people. I've done a lot of work to get mums involved in politics. There aren't no. as many mums involved in politics as want to be, because yeah. the job doesn't really work with having a family. This is the sort of thing that puts people off, and the judge was really clear about that. The judge said, this is the sort of thing that deters people from having their say and being part of public life. Yeah. That's wrong. No, it is wrong. Yeah. It is wrong. Uh, we do have a right of reply from Leicestershire Police. Uh, they said, an apology was made for any distress she may have experienced during our initial investigation and response. The action taken in relation to the original investigation was referred to the forces professional standards department. As a result, words of advice and reflective learning has been provided. Leicestershire Police takes any report of harassment extremely seriously. When a report is made, officers will work to carry out a full investigation. The force remains fully committed to keeping women and girls safe, listening to concerns and tackling violence. Yeah, and I just have to pay tribute to the second group of police. They were brilliant. They totally got that my kids' welfare was my priority in all of this. Yeah. And that also this happens in a lot of stalking and harassment mm. cases. It happens to a lot of people in family courts. It's a deliberate tactic yeah. and we need to find a way of addressing it so that actually social workers can get on and deal with proper safeguarding concerns. Absolutely, there's a lot of things out there that do need looking at. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, look, Stella, we wish you all Thank the best you so much. with the legislation. It's lovely good to luck. see you next time <laughs> under more festive cheer. Yes. We Please hope. don't make me sing Good King Wenceslas last. We, we, will. we will. We will for the <laughs> end At of the show. At least you can say it right. <laughs> yeah. Stella, lovely to see you. <laughs> good luck.